Hello everybody, good afternoon. It's Friday, time for Facebook Friday. I hope you guys have had a great week. I am gonna give you a few minutes to, um, so everybody can find us and then we'll get started. I have so many fun things to show you today. I kind of got crazy with my planning for this week's Facebook Live. Hi, I see you guys jumping on, good. I think maybe I'm in the right place today. Let me share this over on my business page and then we will get started. I have some things I wanna show you guys uh, before we get started. I have new light bulbs. I feel like it's a little bright today. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Kelly. Ooh, Kelly, I'm glad you're here. You're one of the winners from last week, yay. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Gina. All right, you guys. So today it's all about the basic pattern masks. Um, and I'm going to show you where they are in the catalog because I have a really hard time even finding them in the catalog. So you may not have even seen them. And they are only $6. Super cheap. So um, definitely something you want to add on to your next order. Um, they are really good. And there's so many ways to use masks, you guys. I honestly had a hard time like narrowing it down to three different ways because there's just, I mean, a plethora of ways you could use this. Hey guys, glad you're joining us. Last week, um, I was out of town on Friday, like I told you, so we're back on schedule this week and for the foreseeable future, I think Fridays are gonna be good. Um, last week I was in Michigan up with my friend Rhonda Wade at her creative convention and it was awesome it was so good as always inspiring i have tons of ideas and a few things um i didn't swap but people gave me beautiful things that they brought to swap and i'm going to case them they were awesome they did a 3d swap on saturday night and there were some things there that blew my mind like oh my gosh and things i had never seen before so i have some of those tucked away for the future um so that i can show you guys um, but it was, the weather was amazing and my husband and the kids were actually at her house with her husband and kids and they kept texting me, he, my husband kept texting me pictures um, of the lake and how beautiful it was and I hardly even left the, the little convention center where we were. So I got to enjoy it just a little bit. But back in the hot South Texas, we are with no cool front on the way at all. Okay, I'm gonna... Uh, flip the camera over because I want to show you all these things I have down here today and my cat my phone just did something weird so hopefully nothing is gonna happen it did like that whole um, you know where it where it's hot and it gets dark so I don't know hopefully that doesn't mean something it's gonna die because now I can barely see you guys hi Kathy all right so let me get this wrapped up you guys can still hear me okay hopefully <clears throat> All right. Okay, so let's see. Let me move all of this out of the way. And I need to open up my iPad because one of the things I want to show you guys before we get started today is the clearance rack. And let's see. I need to actually bring you guys up here so I can see your comments. So let me open that. <clears throat> Turn that. But let's go over to the Stampin' Up! webpage. And I mentioned to you guys earlier in the week that Stampin' Up! had added some things to the clearance rack. You guys, let's see if I can zoom in. Let's see. I don't want it to mess up. Nope, it's not going to let me zoom in. Hmm. All right, well, we're going to leave it because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> um, okay, so when you're on the Stampin' Up! website and you're shopping, you always need to come over here and check the clearance rack. There's always things on the clearance rack and Stampin' Up! adds things every now and then um, to kind of freshen it up. And this week, I think it was Tuesday, they added a bunch of stuff um, from last year's catalog. And there were a couple of things I wanted to point out to you um, that were my favorites. First of all, there's several markers on here. If you don't have a lot of Stampin' Right markers, this is a great way to stock up on some of them. Here's one of my favorite things, those gold binder clips or library clips, $2.40. You guys know how I like to clip tags and everything on my projects. These are some of my favorite clips that Stampin' Up! ever had and they're only $2.40. So super cheap. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, and the, 
the gable boxes. Guys, those are so easy to put together and make a real quick and fast treat box if you need treats. I mean, for any holiday. So those are the white ones, $3.20, more than half off. The piercing tool, if you don't have a piercing tool or five, <laughs> add some to your, uh, your um, basket next time because $2.40, I actually have about 10 of them and I'm always losing them. So that's why I have so many because one, you know, falls to the floor, rolls under your table, you can't find it. So at that price, you can get several. Um, the Share What You Love Artisan Pearls, $2.40. I mean, who can, we can't ever have enough pearls, right? Now here's something we're using today. We're gonna use the Shimmer Embossing Paste. This is the Silver Embossing Paste and it's on clearance for $3.60 down, what is that, like almost 60%, um, that's a really good price. So if you are interested in embossing, uh, embossing paste, make sure you check that out on the clearance rack. More gable boxes, those are the silver ones. Here's the markers that I pointed out to you, they're still there. Um, there's a bunch of them there, I think, what is it, 16? And it's all the new colors that came out last year when they did the color refresh, $19. That would make a great, you know, gift. And here's my favorite sweet cups. I just ordered a bunch more. <laughs> I'm going to use them for my retreat. Those are going to be a, a fun pillow gift. Um, but they make a great anytime gift. So anyway, make sure you go over and you check that clearance rack when you're shopping because adding a couple of $2 items isn't going to break the bank, right? And you don't want to miss out on any of those deals. All right, so let me pull you guys back up. So I can see what you're saying because my screen has gone dark on my, and oh my, I can't see comments at all. My screen on my phone has gone dark. I'm not sure what that means. Come on, show me the comments. Well, oh, isn't it going to be a, is this, is this the kind of day it's going to be? Oh, there we go. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, 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 okay. So how about some door prizes from last week? Kelly Frank, she's on here. Kelly, I do believe I have your mailing address. Thank you for sharing the video. And Christine Seekers, I believe I have your mailing address too, Christine. So congratulations, ladies. I just picked them at random from um, everybody who shared last week's Facebook Live. That's all you have to do to win is share it and make sure that I can see it. If you share it to a private group or something, you have to tell me that you shared. Um, otherwise, I can't see it. This week's prizes are the Boo to You adorable stamp set with a couple of Highland Heather uh, Stampin' Blends. So if you love these cute little critters, I taped that down so you can't even see the other guy. Um, if you love these critters and you would like to win, just share the video on Facebook, please, and I'll pick a, a winner next Friday. Um, my Halloween class, guys, actually, I don't even have the projects because I've already started cutting, but let's look at the PDF. Today's PDF, here it is, Monster Bash. Today is the very last day. I will be turning off registration tonight when I go to bed and ordering everything in the morning. So if you did not sign up for the Monster Bash class to go, make sure you do that. Um, this, I think you guys set a record this time. I think this may be my highest purchased class to go. Wow, you guys, thank you so much. So I have already started cutting and scoring. It's going to take me a long time because there are a lot of scoring um, lines on all of these projects. But anyway, here's the sign up um, link if you need it, if I don't get your email. The second class to go this month is the snowman season. This is, and I took this to Michigan, so it's kind of worse for the wear, I guess. This is my Alzheimer's fundraiser um, class. You order the bundle and the embellishment kit and I send you the class for free. Uh, the details for that are over on my blog. You have to use that host code. That's the only way I know that you want this class and that's the only way you get it for free. And I am donating all of the um, profits from this class to the Alzheimer's Research Foundation. Um, and the deadline for this one is next Friday. So next Friday, I will close that and start working on that one. And thank you to everyone who has already purchased that class. It's incredible. You guys have blown me away really this month with, with uh, your orders. And um, I can't wait to see what the final total for that is. Oh, oh, wait, I got to show this first. Okay, you for all of my fellow Halloween lovers, 
Paper Pumpkin this month is adorable. It, there's 20 treat boxes in here. You just assemble the boxes. The only stamping is this Bon Appetit or whichever sentiment you decide to do. And look, clips. You know how I love clips. They're black little clips, little, little clothes pens that you clip on here. Really, really cute. Um, the stamp set, here's the stamp set if you can see it. It's got some things that I want to use these for another project. Look at this. I found these at um, CVS. Several years ago I had ordered something very similar to this from Amazon and sold them at a crafts uh, craft fair that I had um, using a skeleton stamp set that we had many years ago. But anyway, I found these at CVS. And I think that this stamp set's gonna go really well with decorating these bone pens. Aren't they so cute? Um, so this paper pumpkin, if you have not done paper pumpkin before, um, wow, on my iPad, it looks like I'm freezing up. I sure hope I'm not freezing up. Um, but if you haven't done paper pumpkin before, it's a kit that comes every month. It has everything that you need. And this month you're gonna get a gorgeous grape um, Ink and stamp and spot. Now this month has already passed, but so you can't sign up and get this, but I ordered several extras because I knew this was gonna be popular. So if you missed out on ordering your own and you would like to buy one of mine, just send me a message and I have already sold one of them. I sent it, sent it in the mail today. So if you want one, just shoot me a, a message and we will work that out. Um, also, there was a cute little, hmm, well, I was gonna show you, there was a cute little flyer for the next two paper pumpkins are gonna be Christmas and they coordinate. And um, if you're into Christmas big time, those are gonna be two that you want. Okay, so Facebook Live, Facebook Friday every week, I do three projects. I pick a product for us to focus on um, and we do three projects. If you go over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, you'll find the PDF here under the last photo. Whatever the last photo is in the post, you'll see a link and you click on that and you can get the PDF. It has all the items listed that I've used with their item numbers and their price, as well as any measurements, score lines, things like that. So then you can save it or print it or do whatever you want um, for future uh, reference. Now, the second part to Facebook Friday is if you would like to order in conjunction with this class, then, oh, yours is freezing. Oh, I know, mine looks like it's freezing too. I don't know what's up. Oh, Facebook Live. You never know what's gonna happen. Um, any, if it's freezing up really bad for you guys, um, sign out, come back in, try it. If it's really bad, then come back in an hour and watch the recording because I upload it in HD and it's always better. The recording is always better. Um, okay, so the second part to Facebook Friday is the ordering. If you put in an order between now and Monday and use this host code and your minimum is $35 or more, then I'm gonna send you the projects for free, the project kit. Here's last week's project kits. They went out uh, yesterday. I try to get them out pretty quickly. I get up Tuesday morning first thing and I pull up all the names that have used that host code um, in, since Friday and everybody gets one of these in the mail. Now, if your order happens to be over $150, don't use the host code because you're gonna get stamp and rewards and that's just free product and I would much rather you get that free product um, but I'm also gonna send you these as a thank you. If I see that you've ordered in that time frame and your order is over $150, don't worry, you will still get the make and takes for free and you'll get those stamping rewards. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. Let's move all of this out of the way. Um, so today we're using these masks and I saw several of you, Peggy, I see your message. Uh, message me, okay? Because I will forget. Um, I see... I'm distracted by comments. Okay, I have to I have to focus. Um, I saw when I posted earlier, some of you said you've already ordered these. Awesome, I'm, I'm super glad to hear that because they're really neat this time. Um, I like masks. Sometimes I'm not crazy about the patterns, but these patterns, all four of them, I've had a, a really fun time with. Can you tell I've used this one <laughs> quite, 
quite a bit. Um, but I wanted to show you where they are in your catalog. In case you haven't seen them, they're on page 35. And every time I'm looking for the item number, I scroll, I flip through the catalog like twice before I, I find them. They're on this page right here with the cups of cheer, the Christmas cup of Christmas and the everything festive. They're right here and they're only six dollars. All right. You get the four masks all together. All right, well, let's get started. So we're gonna do three different things today. We're gonna spritz, we're gonna sponge, and we're gonna use embossing paste. And then I have a fourth card, and I hope I can remember to show you guys at the end, okay? Um, because I actually have several versions of this and a fourth technique that I wanna just show you. But let's get started with the box. You know, I can't go one Facebook Live without doing a 3D project. We have to do the 3D project. So I've got that here and super funny, somebody, one of you messaged me today and you were looking for a project to hold what's in here. I'm so excited. Can you zoom back out? It actually did zoom in before. Debbie, I don't see it zoomed in at all. It looks normal to me. Does it look zoomed in to the rest of you? Why is it freezing? I don't like that. Ay, ay, ay. Let's see. All right. Everybody hold on for a second. Let's see what my internet is doing. Let's turn off. Hmm. Let's see. Well, no, but it looks like everything is on. I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, we're just going to keep, we're just going to keep going. Um, Kimberly, good. It looks fine. Okay. All right. So somebody messaged me today and she said, I was hoping that you have a project using these. And I said, you'll never guess it's today's project. So that's what this is. And let me slide off that belly band and show you what's inside. A pumpkin spice roll by our wonderful little Debbie. I know, little Debbie, I'm a big fan. Um, so that's what we're using. You can find these by going to your little Debbie website. There's a snack finder and you en enter your zip code. Um, and Natalie, it was you, wasn't it? Um, and um, it'll tell you what stores in your area have these. So you don't have to drive all over town looking for them. Um, that website, the little Debbie snack finder is, I have it linked on my blog today. If you want to go over to my blog, I linked that so you can just click on over there if you want to find these. So the um, the um, masking, can you guys see it's very light there on the sides and it's also on the leaf, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's do that part first. We're going to use, and I've got to use grid paper today because everything that I'm doing is messy. My my fingers have been super messy all week. We went to a, a gala on Wednesday for my daughter and I we were all dressed up and I looked down and my hands were like covered in ink. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, so all of that just for the sake of creativity, right? Okay, so this is a Mango Melody cardstock six by six. And I'm just gonna cover it with a mask. Now I've taken the, a spritzer. We have, we sell these spritzers and they come two to a package. They're just $3 for two. Um, I filled it with alcohol, 50% rubbing alcohol, um, about three quarters of the way. Then I took my Mango Melody um, reinker bottle and I squirted a bunch of drops in there. Like, guys, I'm like grandma with the measuring. I just throw it in there. I have no idea how many, like 10 drops maybe. And the more you do, the darker it's going to be. So um, you can just play around with it. So Mango Melody. And then you can see right here, I wanted it to be shimmery. So I took my Frost White Shimmer Paint and I just put a drop in there. I just poured it boop, in one drop. That's all you need. So then you shake it up. And one tip I have about these is I take a Sharpie and I write what's in there. Because I don't reuse mine and I have a box full of them and you think you're gonna remember what's in there and you don't. So I'll pull one out thinking maybe it's, you know, Rich Razzleberry and it comes out something totally different. So I now have started writing on here exactly what's in there. Um, you can reuse them, um, but I just find that, well, I'm lazy. 
<laughs> and I don't want to clean them out. I just want to keep reusing them for the same colors. And so I just order, you know, three or four at a time and I use them and then order more when I get them. Okay, so uh, mango sh and shimmer and I'm gonna shake it up. And now make sure your space is covered that nothing in the area, it can get ruined because it will. Um, when I spray my spritzer, it never goes in the right direction the first couple of times. It's on my shirt, it's on the table, it's on the window in front of me. All right, so there, I just spritzed it a whole bunch of times and I'm actually gonna, oh, nope, Charlie. <laughs> he hears, there's a delivery guy. It's gonna take about, I, I mean, that alcohol dries really, really fast. I'm just gonna set it to the side and we're gonna give it a couple of minutes. So while we're doing that, while we're waiting, let's go ahead and make our box. One thing you can do too with your shimmer paint, your, I mean your uh, spritzer, is I get a little box, like a, you know, like a little Stampin' Up box that has come, and I set it on top of the trash can or down in the trash can, and I spritz it in the trash can. <laughs> that prevents some of that, you know, like, I can even see right here, I've spritzed that whole thing. So it kind of prevents that over spray that seems to happen for me every time. You can see why I was covered in ink. One time I went to the grocery store with ink spritzed all over my shirt on my belly and I had no idea. <laughs> oh well. Okay, now let's make the box. You're gonna need very vanilla thick. Thanks for sharing you guys. Thick, very vanilla. Um, Carla, have you ever had a problem with the spritzers not spraying? Yes, and that's when I use the alcohol that's the higher percentage. I don't know what that percentage is, but you guys know alcohol says, let me just grab one, and we'll see. And my friend, my friend, and downline Anne Marie taught me that, that if your alcohol right here, if the percentage is too high, it clogs up that spritzer, especially with that shimmer paint, it kind of does something weird. So I try when I buy my alcohol for my office, I get whatever's lower. So yeah, 70% I think works fine, and I just grabbed 50% last time and it's been working great. So maybe that's the problem. Okay, so Barbara, 91% did not work for me. It, it did clog up my spritzer, yeah. You just have to play around. Luckily, alcohol is very cheap but I would try somewhere in the low range. Okay, for the box, let's look. I need my measurements. This box is very vanilla thick, seven and a fourth by seven. Let's start on the long side, seven and a fourth side. You wanna score at one and a fourth. I gotta look at my, ooh, that print is small. Three and a fourth, four and a fourth, and six and a half. And then turn it, one on the short side, one and a fourth. Oh, Charlie's about to lose his mind. Delivery truck's making a lot of noise. And five and three fourths. Oh, they're leaving now. Hopefully he will calm down. Okay, now you have all of this scored. And if you miss those measurements, just go over to my blog and grab that PDF because it has everything that you need. All right, you've burnished all your lines. Here is the skinny tab right here. That's gonna be our lid, um, the part that folds down, okay? So we're going to, over there on that skinny, where we have that skinny tab, we're gonna cut out those corner rectangles. Then back on the long side, I'm gonna cut all of my tabs like that. Now these two middle ones, I'm actually gonna cut at an angle because I don't cut very straight and that will just help everything line up a little bit better because I'm too far in or out of my score line. All right, oh, come on. There we go. Now turn it. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Cut those, a little sliver. Boy, that truck is loud. I can hear them on the next street over. 
All right, <laughs> Charlie can hear him too. Okay, so there, that's what your paper looks like right now. By the way, we're gonna have a clean recording of this. I've already done it, it's already on YouTube. I just need to make it public. So if you wanna come back and make this, you can just hop over to my blog. I'll link them up underneath each project so you can just watch the clean recording. Okay, remember, this is the little part that's gonna go down into our box as the lid. So I'm gonna cut those corners off and cut these tabs in half. This is very similar to the box we made last week, I believe. Same concept. And cut the corners off of those. I'm finding that my boxes are all different sizes, but pretty much the same construction. Okay, let's take a look at it. There we go. That's what it looks like after you've cut it. If you need to pause the video, if you're making it later, you can just pause that. Now you wanna use a really good adhesive like Taran Tape or Tombow. I am using Fast Fuse. <laughs> Long since retired Fast Fuse. You know what? Why does this look like my measurements are dried? Uh-oh. All right, we may have to fake it today. I may have to check my measurements because I think I scored this incorrectly. Er, it looks like I did. Hmm. What did I do? All right, well, let's see. Let's put it back over here. I've already put adhesive on it, but I bet I can fix it. Let's look. What? It's probably because my poor eyes can't see. And I did it. No, that's right. One and a fourth, five and three fourths. Mm -hmm. This one right here looks really extra skinny. Let's check, let's check. Three and a fourth, four and a fourth. Mm, that's the one that's wrong right there. All right, you guys, see? It's not always easy. Some of you are like, you make it look so easy. Not all the time. So what I do is I measure these to see. That one's one and a fourth. That one's two, but that one's one. It's gotta be one and a fourth. All right, that's what I did. So we're gonna we're gonna fix this box instead. So the PDF should be not four and a fourth, four and a half, right there. Okay, I will change that. This is why you watch my video so that you don't make the same mistakes I make. <laughs> this box gonna it's gonna be special. It's gonna have some problems, I can tell you right now. Okay, let's try it again. It's gonna have, it's gonna be a convertible. It's gonna have an air conditioning hole. <laughs> it worked yesterday when I made the other video. Oh, good grief. All right, so if you come back to watch, don't watch the live watch the recorded video because it's much better. All right, so see how I did? I put those tabs in there like that, folded it in. It looks like a cream cheese box if you buy cream cheese blocks. Oh yeah, Shannon, very human. And then we just fold those tabs in and our little box. <laughs> oh no, our poor little box. All right, and then that's what it should look. That's what it should look like. That's okay, it's salvageable. Look, see, that little extra score line is on the back. All right, ta-da, we fixed it. We made it work. All right, there we go. That that special box can go to someone you, that you don't like very much. If you have to give out boxes at work or something, make sure that one goes to the person who's like rude or who makes a mess. <laughs> That's not very nice, I shouldn't say that. Okay, there's your box. Or you can just remake it. All right, now here is our do you see it has purple flecks? Wow, we added in some purple this time. Not sure where that came from. All right, now this is a six by six piece, right? We're gonna cut it down. Grab my paper cutter. We're gonna, we're gonna cut it down to two three inch strips, all right? Then we're gonna adhere it. Is this gonna be one of those Facebook Lives where I screw everything up? I, I have a feeling we're not starting off very well. All right, then we're just gonna put adhesive right here. So now we have one long strip. I don't know if you guys can see that, um, the pattern, it's very light, but it does exist. 
Now, put it back in your paper trimmer, and you're gonna trim it down to three, it's already three, so we're gonna trim it down to seven and a half. Right, seven and a half. Thanks, Sandy. You know, I think it'll be just fine. They don't care about the box anyway, right? We're the ones that care about the box. They will just want the treat. All right, now you have this piece three by seven and a half, so put it there, put your box right in the middle. And we're just going to, whoops, gotta make it straight. We're just going to wrap it. All right, we're gonna, we're not gonna score it. We're gonna fold it. I find that doing this is easier than trying to figure out where those score lines should be. So see, I just take it and I pinch it around the box and then I take it off and I fold it. So we've got that one, we've got that one. One more right here. All right. There's that one and there's that one. All right, now this is a belly band, which means it's going to slide off. So we do not want it to adhere it to the box. We just want to adhere it to itself. So fold that over just like that. All right, and see how it slides on and off? All right, so there, now we have that. Now we've got this piece left, so we can't leave it. We can't throw it away. It's cute, it's got that cute pattern on it from the mask. So let's cut a leaf out of it. This is one of the leaves from the Come Together bundle, the stamps and dies, which by the way is going to be my next class to go. I've got some gorgeous projects already planned for next month. So be on the lookout for that one. All right, so now we have our leaf, but it needs a little bit more. So I'm gonna get my Mango Melody ink and I'm just gonna ink those edges. Hello everybody who's joined me. Wow, we have a lot of people watching today. You came to see me mess up today. Welcome. <laughs> it's all right. All right, now, oh, the stamps that I'm using. Let me show you the stamps that I'm using. A Wish for Everything. This is from the annual catalog. It's a two set, two case set, which means it has a lot of stamps in it. I mean, I really, really like it. I've been using it quite a bit this week. It's got sentiments for lots of different things. The one that we're using right now is, where is it? This one, giving thanks for you with a very grateful heart. So really, I'm using it with a fall themed box, but you could use that anytime. And then there's a Halloween one that we're gonna use in just a minute too. Okay, so let's do that. Early espresso and a strip of very vanilla. And we're going to stamp that. There we go, all right, that worked. That worked. And then we have these little um, wooden accents. Let me give you the official name because I have no idea what they are. Tags and feather elements. They come with feathers and, why do these, does this say tags and feathers? Oh yes, because the other one is a wood slice and it has a hole in the top, so it's a tag. So it's wood slices and different feathers um, and they're beautiful. They're really, really neat. Now I have, with the same come together um, dies, I've cut out an early espresso designer series paper leaf. And we've got that, we've got that, we've got that, we've got all of our elements. One last thing is this piece of crumb cake designer series paper. And I believe it is one and a half by four and a half. And I just punched the ends with that tailored tag punch. And then we're ready to put it all together. Did I bring my adhesive? I did, all right. Let's grab some dimensionals, of course. And we're gonna cover up that seam right there on the paper, right like that. Let's turn it this way. And then we're gonna add this beautiful, I love this color, Mango Melody. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful leaf. And I really like it with the contrast of the early espresso, that really bright, you know, light orange with that really dark, rich brown. I think it's very pretty. All right, we'll put that one there with a dimensional. Now this one, it has a, a side that's painted, but I'm gonna use just the raw wood side. 
So I'm gonna put some adhesive on here and let's see, mm, I don't think fast fuse is gonna work very well. So let's use Tombow. I'm almost out. Uh-oh, am I all the way out? Let's see. I know, oh, there we go. I was gonna say, I know there's some more in there. I need to put it in my thing so it'll drain down. Okay, put that right there. Now our sentiment, we're gonna actually cut this down as well with our Taylor Tag Punch. And the reason I like using the Taylor Tag Punch is because I can see what I'm doing. We have the banner triple punch, but I, you can't necessarily see how far you go in with your paper. So when it's something small or something I really wanna have control over where I punch, I like to use that punch instead. All right, we're gonna put that there and then it wouldn't be complete without a bow. Hi, Carol, welcome. It does, Wendy, right? It makes it pop. This is a linen bow. Now, I meant to point something out while I'm adding this. Let me point this out. We inked the edges of that leaf with a Stampin' Sponge, and we're gonna use the Stampin' Sponges again in the next project when we get really inky. Um, and the Stampin' Sponges come in a multi-pack. Are there two or are there three? I can't remember. But anyway, you can cut them. They're like, a, they come in a circle. And I cut mine down into wedges like this. And then I put a little, I punch whatever color I've used. So this is mango, I punch it. And this is a circle tab punch, which yesterday I thought was retired. <laughs> and then I realized it's not retired. So in my video, I do believe I say it's retired but it's not, this cute punch is still available. Um, but you could also just punch a circle and fold it in half. Carla, three pack, thank you. So you actually get three big sponges in our sponge pack. Um, and then you cut them like a pizza and you have all these little slices um, for all your colors and you can staple that on and just keep them. I just throw them all in a basket. And that way, you know, again, which color you had on there. Okay, so there's our box. Look, you can't even tell that I, I scored it wrong the first time. Look, no one would know. See, I shouldn't have even said anything. Just, it would have worked. <laughs> you know, it happens, you guys, and you can usually fix those mistakes. Usually you can, and it happens to the best of us. Okay, so there we go with project number one. I hope you like it. I hope you can use it. Um, remember those little Debbie... Um, pumpkin spice rolls, kind of a mouthful. You can find those really, I would say, you know, Walmart, Target, your grocery store, they're pretty common. But if you can't find them, make sure you go to the Little Debbie website and click Snack Finder up at the top. Carla, wasn't it you who told me about the Snack Finder? I think maybe it was. Um, and you literally enter your zip code and it'll tell you which stores in your area carry the snacks you're looking for. It's brilliant. Okay, let's go to the next one. And this is my favorite. Let me move these. Let's see, do we need the big shot again? I don't think we do. So I'm gonna set those on there. This is my favorite project. And I have to say that last weekend, I saw something on Instagram where somebody was doing, they were sponging a moon and then they inked the trees over it. I wasted more time than I am willing to admit looking for that project. Could not find it. Um, there, Melody Hyde, Melody Hyde did an awesome project too with this. Hers, she traced and cut these out. It's beautiful. Um, you can find it on Instagram. But I, I wanted to recreate that, the moon in the background, and I just couldn't find it. So I created something completely different, and I really, really like how it came how it came out. So that's what we're gonna do. So let me get another piece of grid paper and we're going to ink this. We're gonna do two kinds of masking actually. And I wanna show you, I have, I have several versions of this card that I'll show you when we're done. Okay, now for this, you're gonna need post-it notes. Um, and after, just today actually, I remembered that there's something called post-it tape like this, it's, post, it's by Post-it Note, the Post-it Note people, and it's Post-it Tape. And it's excellent, and I've had it for a long time, got it on Amazon somewhere, and it will serve the same purpose. 
that these post-it notes serve. So um, if you're into really, you know, masking and doing kind, these different kinds of things where you want to be able to peel it off and not rip your paper, um, this post-it note tape is great. Okay, so I am going to start with a piece of shimmer white cardstock that is four by five and a fourth. Now I'm going to take these post-it notes and I'm going to use the grid line here on my, my uh, grid paper to mark off two sections. Okay, see what I'm going to do, my, my post-it note really isn't long enough. Do I need to move that up? My post-it note isn't long enough, so I'm gonna have to use two. You may have to use more than two. One thing you wanna make sure is that your paper is straight up here and your post-it note is lining up with that grid paper on both ends, okay? So then, over here on this side, I'm gonna leave about that much space. I don't know, that doesn't look like it's thick enough. Yeah, I need to go out further. Let's go out one more. Well, that looks like it's too, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, line it up with your post-it note on your grid line and down here. And that sticky part of the post-it note is gonna keep the ink from going out further. It's also keeping our paper held down because it's sticking here to this, um, to the grid paper. Susan, her name is Melody Hyde. Ham and Pen Creations, Hammond and Pen Creations, I think is what her Instagram account is. She is a lead concept artist at Stampin' Up. She's amazing. Um, so look for that. And if you just search the hashtag Stampin' Up on Instagram, you'll find it um, because she um, has tagged that. Also, she and the other concept artists have created an account on Instagram. And if I remember at the end, I will show you guys. Oh, I need to hurry. Um, called stamping through the catalog and they feature two different stamp sets each week and lots of samples. It's really, really neat. Okay, we're gonna start with, we need, did we use pumpkin pie last time or did I pull it out and use it earlier? I did, it's over here. We're gonna use Mango Melody again and pumpkin pie and rich razzleberry. So first we're gonna start at the top with a light Mango Melody and this is one of my Stampin' Sponges and I'm just gonna start going in circles. Notice I'm starting over there on my post-it note because that way I won't have any dark blobs of ink. If I have any dark blobs, it'll be over on the post-it note. Okay, now pumpkin pie. Kind of the second third of the piece. And I'm blending it up into that mango. I feel like I cut this stamp down a little bit too small. It should be just a little bit bigger. All right, I'm gonna grab that mango and kind of blend all that together. Now, you're gonna think, mm, I don't know, it doesn't look very good, it's not blending, but as it dries, it does blend together and it all just magically smooths out and looks beautiful. All right, now last, Rich Razzleberry. All right, this is our dark color. And this is what we're creating is a sunset. And if you have looked at sunsets, you know that it is darker at the bottom and lighter at the top, or maybe it's a sunrise, I don't know. But down towards the earth, it's dark. All right, I'm blending the rich razzleberry. Whew, it's a workout with your arm. This is why I have ink all over me. I had rich razzleberry ink all, ah, look at my fingers, all over me. If you don't like that, get some of those disposable gloves from the grocery store. It does help. Okay, now we're gonna leave that alone. I think that's good enough. Move all of this out of the way. Let me close these ink pads. I think I'm gonna permanently have ink under my fingernails. Now, let's take the mask, the trees, the spooky trees mask, and I'm gonna use some of that post-it tape. Whoops, <laughs> that's not post-it tape, those are glue dots. I'm gonna kind of glue or tape it down here and here, okay? Now, we're gonna get stays on 
which is right here. And I chose Stays On over Memento because Stays On is a darker, um, heavier ink. What's the word I'm looking for? It's more dense and it's gonna give you more coverage. Um, one thing that I've noticed, this is a sponge brayer. And one thing I've noticed is that I do have to re-ink my stays on each time I do this. All right, and take your sponge brayer and roll it around, pick up, don't just go back and forth and back and forth like that. You need to pick it up and move it and get different parts of that sponge. All right, now we are talking. Hopefully my pad won't be too juicy when I go to stamp my sentiment, which sometimes happens. So then you have to use your sponge brayer to get a little more off. Look at that, oh, it looks so good. The magic is when you peel off that mask. Okay, I think we are ready. So now put that, sponge brayer in a safe spot and let's peel off that oh my gosh oh my gosh it's so beautiful all right now look at that <gasps> last night my daughter my oldest daughter who is an art student was peeling tape off of her art project and she was like look at that straight line I'm like I know and there you have it isn't that gorgeous Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Absolutely so much fun. And every time I do it, this, this project, it takes my breath away. Okay, now we're just gonna layer it up. We're not gonna do too much to this card because we really want that to be the star of the show. We don't wanna take away from it. So now this is, oh goodness gracious. Is it a full moon? That was last week, wasn't it? <laughs> the wheels have come off. All right, now we're gonna adhere it to a slightly larger piece of pumpkin pie. That's four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Check the PDF for those measurements. And then the Mango Melody, oh gosh, I don't wanna get ink on it with my fingers. Mango Melody card base, all right. Now I've got a strip of Whisper White. And I should have left that open. We're gonna stamp the that sentiment. This is, let's make sure it's not too juicy. Oh, it's very juicy. I may need to get another one. Let's see. No, I think it'll be fine. All right, um, this is a sentiment from a wish for everything again. Wishing you a trick or treating, candy eating, frightful, delightful time. Isn't that cute? So cute. All right, dimensionals. Two dimensionals on this guy, and we're just gonna put them right here. Ugh, I wanna go wash my hands so bad. I can't look. Oh, I did, I smeared it, or I smeared it from my fingers. Okay, there we've got that, but I think we can cover that up. Uh-oh, oh, here they are. Okay, I have two. These are the Monster Bash enamel dots, and they've got these spooky birds. Perfect, right? Right there. And then, let me grab my Take Your Pick tool, and we're gonna add a few enamel dots. I have used, I have gone through like six packs of these already. I love this, this little pack of enamel dots a lot. All right, so down here, we'll distract the eye, then we'll put one right there. That's pretty low, but hey, that was a lot of work, so we're gonna make it happen. Here we go. Ta-da, we are done with that card. Isn't that fun? So think about this mask. You know, you could do a winter scene with that as well, I think. Um, really, really fun, a really fun technique. A really good way to ruin your nails, but who cares, right? It's art. Okay, now, so here's the this card. Here's another card. This is what I had in mind. I saw something on Instagram where they did the moon. They cut a, they punched a circle, did a moon with a sponge dauber, and then did the trees. But I, like I said, I couldn't find it, so I don't know. I just kind of made it up because uh, that's all I remember. I don't remember anything else. I stamped those bats. 
and then the sentiment like that. There's a piece of vellum over it to kind of uh, mute it a little bit, but same concept. And then here it is on Smoky Slate, Whisper White. I did the Moon Whisper White, the trees, and this stays on, on um, Smoky Slate. So just some different options for you to use. Um, now look, isn't that funny? That looks more purple, that looks more like a dark red. It just depends on, on your, your sponging. You can see they're all a little bit different really fun really fun 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 okay next project wait i need to leave that out for the very end next project because we have 10 minutes oh no I, you know what i actually have longer than that my daughter is in afternoon patrols this year it buys me like an extra 20 minutes i love it my table is crooked all right whoo now i have saved the messiest for the last are you guys ready embossing paste we are gonna use embossing paste embossing paste is so much fun and it is so addicting this month for my stamp club to go I did these coffin boxes with the embossing paste on here and the way that I did it is the box was open out flat and I used post-it notes just like I did a minute ago to mask off the sides and then I embossed all of them and I um I did a bunch of them but I had embossing paste left which you'll see in a minute I always mix way too much embossing paste so I grabbed cardstock and I just started embossing cards embossing cardstock and so I made different cards this is the one we're going to make today um, but I wanted to show you the other ones. This is similar to this one using that, oh, whatever that Baroque pattern or whatever it is. Um, I tented it. I'll show you with Gorgeous Grape. And how, you know what, Halloween cards, I'm glad you brought that up. I send Halloween cards in October to anybody like as a thank you. It's just a fun, you know, like, hey, thank you for whatever, but it's Halloween. So you can send, you wouldn't necessarily send a Halloween card saying happy Halloween, although you might if you like sending cards or if you have grandkids or maybe even, you know, your mom, whoever likes to receive happy mail is going to enjoy getting a Halloween card. So, but for me, I use my Halloween cards as my thank you cards also in October. So just a little tidbit on that. Um, so anyway, there's the embossing paste on black and then here it is on Highland Heather and I used the stamp set is called everything festive and so it's got these different um, fall and winter and then even Valentine's or I guess PS I love you could be anytime, right? So I did that with some hearts, but all of them kind of have the same setup a stitched oval maybe a die cut to match the scene, a bow, and the background. I mean, the background really should be what's the most beautiful, right? With what you really want them to, to look at and see. Okay, let's make it. Broadcast interrupted, goodness. Okay, am I back? Are you guys still there? Ah, cutting in and out, cutting in and out. I'm so sorry. Um, you exited and came back, Shannon, good. Okay, well, we're almost done. You remember the recording um, will be clean and crisp. Oh, froze again. Can you guys hear me even though it's frozen? Oh, goodness gracious. Facebook has issues. <laughs> it's not an internet problem. I hope you're right. Okay, let's mix the embossing paste. This is the silicone mat. We do sell these. I think it's like $6 also. Um, it's great for messes and you can see this is from yesterday and it will just peel right off. Um, now the embossing paste we have comes in shimmer white and regular white. And um, like I showed you at the beginning, the silver embossing paste is actually on the clearance rack. So this is a palette knife, um, which we also sell, which you can add on if you're gonna start embossing. Um, using embossing paste and I get a little bit of it and I always get more than I need that's why I have extra pieces of cardstock and I'm using it up and then you take any color you want this is gorgeous grape I put five drops in there you can use more you can use less play around with it and see and then it's like icing it makes me think I'm gonna ice a cake and then you just mix it up now, the word of warning with embossing paste is that it turns into cement. 
real cement. <laughs> it will ruin your palette knife. It will ruin um, whatever you have that has it on there and it will not come off. So make sure you clean up as soon as you are done, okay? All right, we're gonna use the polka dots. Whoops polka dots and we are going to get a piece of gorgeous grape cardstock again four by five and a fourth and I'm not going to tape it down or anything I'm just going to take this and put it over there why is it so far down I need to move up we'll just cover that up there that's better um okay so now I'm going to take you could tape it down if you want and a lot of times I'll make my piece bigger than what I need um, that way I can cut it down and I can stick it down on this bigger pieces all right so now just grab some of your embossing paste and you are like a spackle artist like you are adding grout to tile or something I don't know it just feels very like a very fancy way to do this it's like real art mixed media is what it's called all right i'm just grabbing and spreading now keep in mind that every little bump and um oh look i i think i did pretty good today i didn't waste too much every little bump and smear will come through when it's dried so if i left it like that that is exactly what it's going to look like when it's dried so you want to make sure that you have smoothed it out really well scraped off as much extra as you can because if you leave a little bump or a little you know um a gouge i think that's the probably the word i'm looking for we need a little bit more down here it will come through and i will show you on one of those cards i in fact did do that and it's okay it doesn't have to be perfect Okay, I think I've scraped all the extras. Now, if we were not on Facebook Live, I would immediately take this, look at that, and go to the sink. That's how fast it's gonna dry because if I wait till we're done, it's gonna be dried on here. So I have a bowl of water that I'm gonna put it in. I actually thought of that ahead of time. Now this, we're gonna get a paper towel and wipe that off because I truly can't wait another five minutes because it turns hard as a rock and I have tried getting it off things that I've accidentally left it on and had zero luck I mean I have soaked for like days all right I'm gonna put that in the bowl and clean that out when we're done okay now we have this and it is gonna take I mean five minutes at the most to dry it's really fast all right let's pick that up and move it over so if you have extra then of course just grab some of your scraps and start embossing away with your masks so that you don't have to waste it all right now let's make the other parts we're just going to stamp that sentiment in coastal cabana and the reason i chose coastal cabana is because look at the sparkles can you see those turquoisey sparkles in there i was like hey that's exactly coastal cabana that's just the natural way that those sparkles came out and they're gonna match really well with Coastal Cabana from our home to yours. I cut a couple of snowflakes. I haven't bought any of the new snowflakes in the, my fast fuse looks like it's out, we'll see. I haven't bought any of the snowflakes that are in the holiday catalog yet. So these are just as good and they are from the seasonal layers dies in the annual catalog so I'm gonna put one at the top and one at the bottom I'm gonna get some sequins these are the noble peacock sequins and they are I don't know if they're coastal cabana or Bermuda Bay they look like Bermuda Bay but they go really well I'll put a couple on there and then oh no where's the ribbon hmm Hold, please, while I go find my ribbon. I hope I'm not out of that ribbon. That is my favorite ribbon. Here's, look, this is all I have left. I need to order some more. This is the tricolor uh, ribbon in purple. Please, 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 Stampin' Up, bring this ribbon out in more colors. It, this is my very favorite ribbon that we have right now, but we only have it in the, the purples. We need it in blues, we need it in turquoises, we need it in pinks and reds. It's so pretty. And it, it is um, 
soft and easy to use. All right, we have definitely reached the end of the hour because I can't find anything. Here they are, glue dots. I need an assistant who can say, here, here you go. Okay, so we've got that ready. Let's see if our embossing paste is dry. Yeah, it's dry. Look at that, that was quick, wasn't it? All right, some dimensionals, which again, who knows where they are? Well, let's see, do we have another pack? We do, we have another sheet. Thanks guys, I'm glad you like that. That is so pretty and what I would really like to do is spend time mixing different colors. Uh, Melon Mambo, Coastal Cabana, mixing it with that um, emb shimmer embossing paste so that we can see it in lots of different colors. The possibilities are endless. All right, I put that on with dimensionals and I'm seeing that my screen is frozen again. Arr! All right, we're just gonna keep going. We're almost done. Can't stop now. A couple dimensionals and ta-da, we're done. That's an easy card. You emboss a bunch of backgrounds that you have them lined up, ready to go, and there's your card. Now, I'm gonna show you a difference. Look at the, well, I don't know if you can tell. See how much darker these dots are than these? So when I mix this, I probably put more re-inker in there. Um, I wanted to show you real quickly before I show you my last project that right here, I don't know if you guys can see, there's like a line here where I didn't smooth that out. And so that's what I'm talking about when you scrape that off, make sure it's nice and smooth. It doesn't bother me, it's fine. And see, I even missed a, a little dot there. Um, but that just shows you how that cement sh shimmer um, embossing paste dries super hard and it will um, actually dry exactly as you see it when it is um, in its liquid form or I don't know, and that's probably not what liquid, it's a, it's a solid. All right, here's one more. I wanted to show you what I did with this mask. Here's the Baroque mask, and this is shimmer cardstock. I set it down and I spritzed it with water, real good, real heavily with water. Then I took my pigment sprinkles and I sprinkled it, right? And then I spritzed it some more. Now, if you do too much spritzing, it will together too much. So there's like this happy medium. I actually did it four or five times and only overspritzed one time. <laughs> but look how different variations of the color there is just through that mask. So I let it sit there till it was completely dry and then I picked it up. Um, I know it's being a pain, I'm sorry. Here's some other others that I did. Pretty, right? Okay, you guys, we might as well give up and say goodbye today. Um, remember, I will post the photos of these um, probably next week also, so you guys can see a better picture of them. We did three different projects today using these awesome basic pattern masks. If you put your order in by Monday at midnight using the host code for today, I will send you this one, this one, and this one, so you can make them at home yourself next week. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'm sorry, the um, live stream just didn't behave today. Hopefully next week will be better. You guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next Friday. Bye guys.